I have been absent from AuthorTube for about a month and it's been really good in a lot of ways. And I think I also needed the time to figure out what I wanted to say. I think I'd gotten to a point where I was feeling a lot about what's going on in publishing because there's a lot going on in publishing right now between the DOJ Penguin Random House lawsuit and especially the Barnes and Noble news a couple of weeks ago and that whole firestorm. And honestly, just in general, the book banning discussion, specifically around um, books that are written by authors of color, uh, indigenous authors and LGBTQ authors. I think I was just starting to feel overwhelmed. I was starting to feel tired and I was starting to feel worn down. For those of you that are new here, in case you are, I have been saying for the last few years, my name is Barrett Laurie. I write stories about ordinary queer kids living extraordinary lives. And I think for the first time since I started writing fiction um, five years ago, I am starting to question whether that's still a good move. And what I mean by that is not writing in general, because I love writing and that's my outlet. And that's how, that's how I get my creative juices out is telling stories. But I think I'm at a place where I'm wondering if I am making it harder on myself by writing stories for kids that are likely to be the kinds of stories that would be targeted by, I don't have a nicer way to say it, bigoted folks in school boards, in libraries, school libraries. My state of Missouri has banned countless LGBT books, lots of them by debut authors, um, in the last year. And it's just so disheartening. So when you couple that with the Barnes and Noble discussion a few weeks ago, that was about debut authors not having their books placed on the shelves in Barnes and Noble if they don't have a proven sales track record. First of all, I wanna say that the folks that brought up this discussion on Twitter were authors of color who had direct experience with this. Their reps and their teams were telling them this was happening. So I want to center them and their willingness to share with the rest of us what's going on. Because if and when it is my turn to have a book in bookstores, a traditionally published book, this could be me. And actually, it's very likely to be me because I would be a debut author with not a lot of sales. So this started kind of a spiral in my mind of like, am I wasting my time? Am I writing stories that are never going to get uh, breakthrough? Because there is such a small, finite number of people who break through in traditional publishing anyway, but especially smaller for marginalized authors. Now, granted, I am a white cis gay man, so I'm gonna have better odds than others. But I still recognize the stories I write are likely to be targeted by people who want to limit the reach of our stories. Before I go any further, if you're not familiar with the Barnes & Noble discussion, Michelle Schusterman did a video, which I'm gonna link right here. Please check that out. It gives a breakdown of what's going on, who will be impacted, and how it sucks. Check that out if you want more of the details. Here's where I'm at. I, I was sitting there thinking to myself, I've been writing a lot of flash fiction, a lot of short stories, and those are all written for adults. Would I have as hard of a time getting published if I were writing adult stories that centered LGBT characters, as opposed to stories for kids? And I wanna hear from you guys what you all think. What, what would it take to cause you to quit writing the category that you write in, or to consider shifting that category because I think I'm there. I think I'm at the place where I'm thinking to myself, I have QLM done. I need to finish revising it and get it ready to query. Once that book is done with its querying course, whatever that looks like, I don't know that I want to waste any more time on stories that in this environment, I don't think have a chance <laughs> and um, maybe I'm just lost in the woods and I need my author tube friends family people to encourage me that I'm wrong <laughs> about this but this is how I'm feeling 
And I can't be alone in this. There have to be others out there who, who are watching all of this going on, watching the big five become the big four, become what, the big three? I don't even know what we're gonna be left with after the Penguin Random House nonsense. <laughs> but um, I cannot be the only one who is feeling completely depleted, pretty hopeless, and really at a point where I just think I've wasted several years of my life working on something that I love, I genuinely love, but may not be viable. <sighs> yeah. So that's been where my head's been. That's why I haven't really done any videos for the last month or so. I mean, granted, we, we moved. We had a car breakdown. We had to buy a new car. We had to both start new jobs. My first job outside of the home in two years. A lot's been going on as well, personally, which has been good, actually. The personal stuff has all been really great and things here are good and well. But on the writing front, there have been just a lot of feelings of inadequacy and being unsure about where I should be headed. In saying that, I do have some news that was somewhat unexpected. So while I was in the Twitter rabbit hole of Barnes & Noble situation, a, an agent that was not on my query list for when I queried my YA book in 2021, I saw a tweet that said, if you're from a marginalized group and or, or have a disability and want to query, I'm gonna open up to you and you do not have to disclose how you fit into those categories. But I'm open to queries from you, just mention this tweet. So I was kind of like, well, queer like me, QLM is not ready for query yet at all. Um, but the book I queried last year is. And speaking of that, the reason it's ready is my dear friend, Eva. You all know her as Book in Lane or just Eva in the AuthorTube community. Very dear friend of mine, incredibly talented editor um, and, and just an all around badass person that I literally respect the hell out of, did a once over on that book, read it and gave me a very thorough editorial letter that was so good. So when I was kind of in my despair and I saw that tweet, I took about 10 days to finish the edits that Eva had suggested and decided to query this agent and just see, you know, see what happened. So I sent that out in the middle of August, quietly, didn't tell anyone, didn't tell my family, didn't even tell my husband. Um, and I had a call with that agent last Sunday. And she's not ready to offer representation yet, but offered me an R&R. &R. And this R&R &R feels very different than the last one. And I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna work on it and turn it back in, even if it doesn't turn out to be an offer. Visiting with a publishing professional about my book and being able to say to them, I'm really scared about being banned, about not getting the sales, about not earning out, and then my career fizzling out before it ever even has a chance to start. And again, having not had this person on my target list before, it's a shame I didn't because that discussion we had was really reassuring. And they gave me the reassurances that, you know, we'd try this YA book if it worked out and, and the changes were what they were hoping for and they thought there was a market for it. I may wanna to transition to adult stories if these don't work out, what would that look like? And there were some great reassurances from them that if we were gonna to work together, it was for the long haul and we'd be on that journey together. But there were a lot of reassurances from the agent that even if the Barnes and Noble thing, which they fully believe is going to be a problem for debut authors. One of the reassurances that they gave me was specifically regarding middle grade and that in their experience, while Barnes & Noble is a huge retailer and obviously a huge access point for books and readers, for middle grade, the magic sauce, the secret sauce, according to this agent that I was talking to, was 
a lot more in independent bookstores where the booksellers have an actual relationship with the readers that come in and ask for books, but also scholastic book fairs and school libraries, and that that is what makes or breaks a middle grade book. Granted, we're talking about a YA book together, and straight up, they said the Barnes & Noble thing is bad, bad news for YA, because, like, that's bad news. I still have that nagging feeling that maybe my time with kids' stories is about to run out, and we'll just see. So, I guess, obviously, that's very exciting news, and I'm very excited about this. And and I'm fully sharing this with you all knowing this could be just like last time and it could be a big fat no-no. And if so, that's okay. And I am okay with that. I intend to query QLM before the year is over. It's the latest book I've written. It's the one I want to get out there in the trenches with and just see. But I am feeling pretty disheartened. And so I'm gonna ask all of you, if you write stories about marginalized characters and you're hoping for the traditional publishing path, how are you feeling? What, what are you thinking about this whole Barnes & Noble situation? Is it impacting you? Is it making you question the stories that you're writing and whether they're a waste of time or not? Am I alone in that? And I guess for the larger audience, especially those of you that self-pub, when do you decide to quit a category or pivot away from a category to something else? It's a weird time we're living in, y'all. Weird, weird time. So, you know, knowing when to quit, I, I don't know. Sorry to disappoint those of you that were hoping I was quitting author tube. I know there's a good chunk of you, so sorry. For those of you out there that might be looking for an excellent, excellent developmental editor, please consider Just Eva of Book and Lane. I'm gonna list her services page below in the description box. I have not gone on to do a review yet, but I'm going to this week because again, if anything, just getting a full request and then an R&R &R from this agent, I 100% credit with Eva's editorial uh, vision for this story. I've missed you guys. Coming up is my writing retreat. I am getting away with some of my besties uh, to do a little writing retreat. It is not all of my besties. There are so many people on AuthorTube that I love and love spending time with and stream with regularly and try to lift up and promote as much as possible, but this is just a small gathering of my Missouri peeps, and we are gonna gather in Kansas City and have a four-day writing retreat together. We've rented an Airbnb, everything's paid up, we're ready to go and excited, and so I can't wait to take all of you along with us. We will all be vlogging it. Uh, the group going is Tiffany Russell, T.L. Russ Lifestyle, uh, Morgan Lee, Eva, uh, as well as Gwenna the Winna. So, I hope you guys will join us for some of our streams while we are together. We look forward to sharing our journey with you through our vlogs, our Instagram lives that we're going to be doing, as well as some stream, live streams. And you can virtually join our writing retreat. I hope you'll join us for all of those videos and all of that excitement. It's going to be a ton of fun. I cannot wait. It feels like the biggest collaboration I've done because I'm actually doing it in person, which is so exciting. I'm really glad to be back. I've missed you guys. so. See you soon. Been doing a lot of napping on my birthday. And now I'm sitting by the garage door waiting on my dad to get home so I can eat my cake. So, pretty exciting birthday. <laughs> I will in a minute. Okay, Ricky, I'm gonna have you open it. Hey, Brian, you wanna see your cake? <laughs> giving us a lot of side eye for a girl about to get a cake. <laughs> she not believe us. Mm -mm. She's like, that ain't for Candy me. Made with love, it says. She's like, that is not for me. Did you get a picture of that? I did. He's like, that is not for me. Yes, it is, Chunk. Oh, she's starting to get a little curious, like, what in the hell? Her, her 
curly fry. Come here. This smells like some doggy food. This is your cake. What do you think? She's like, what? What? Like a little piece off the end. What? Will those come off? I don't know. Let me see. Here. I'm going to try to get a picture with her with it. I don't know if I can. Give her that and see what she'll do. Is that edible? Yeah, it's all edible. Oh, that's good. Happy birthday to you. You getting the record? Yeah. Happy birthday, Bright.